Yeah, Landon had a, a the guy that works for him contact me first, he, and then he put us in contact and uh, just trying to figure out what uh, what kind of involvement he, he wanted. Uh, I wasn't sure through the process uh, exactly how he wanted to get involved. We discussed many options, claiming private purchase sales, and kind of the way things are right now. It's a little difficult to uh, do private purchases and uh, the claiming game. I didn't think it would at the end of the day lead him exactly where he wanted to go. So. Uh, we started pointing towards some sales, and uh, we bought a couple of two-year-olds last year. Uh, and then he just wanted to get more and more involved, and so we kept uh, kept uh, looking at horses, the yearling sales, and then more at the two-year-old sales again this year. So he's ended up building quite a stable in a short period of time. Um, I think he's looking at a really uh, good summer, and uh, I think he's bought some really nice prospects. We bought some regional horses. Uh, what I mean is that some of them are Louisiana breads and things like that. Some are Kentucky breads, but I think they all have a chance to uh, uh, potentially be horses that can run anywhere. But uh, some of them will end up in, uh, you know, in, in Texas, Louisiana, some of them in Kentucky. Uh, he, he does live in Mansfield, Texas, close to Lone Star, so he's very interested in um, supporting that, that uh, area and being able to go out to the races. We're pretty excited about what he's got in the barn right now. He's been very patient for a new owner. Um, he's let us bring his horses along at the at the pace that they needed to be, and uh, hopefully in the next couple of months we're going to turn uh, quite a few of them loose. He um, run at the Lone Star meet a uh, couple of the three-year-olds that he bought as two-year-olds last year at the yes, team. Yes, and um, they're fillies that were kind of late maturing fillies. Uh, they're going to be useful. Um, they're going to be horses he can go watch run uh, regularly and they're going to win some races. I think the best is yet to come uh, this next crop of uh, two-year-olds this year. I think there's a, a lot of upside with what we've got in the barn right now. You did buy the top two sales uh, prices at the TTA two-year-old sale this year, including the Philly, who is Louisiana bred, free drop, Maddie. Just ran here at Churchill Downs a, uh, a little bit ago and ran really well in her debut. We like her a lot. Uh, she's a nice filly. Um, we knew we didn't have her 100% uh, the other day. She had gotten sick uh, about a month and a half ago. And we missed a couple of works. Uh, but she's very, very fast, and uh, she's in the TTA self maturity. Uh, it's something that's important to Landon and, and me as well. Uh, we've won it, been fortunate enough to win it quite a few times. So we wanted to get a race under her belt. Uh, we knew that uh, she, she could potentially win up here that day, uh, but she drew the one hole, and she didn't get away as good as we would have liked. Usually she's really quick from there. So. At the end of the day, it set us up very well for the uh, self maturity July 17th at Lone Star Park. And she was second to a horse of Steve Asmussen's who had raced once before. That's a big difference when a horse that's raced one time and a horse who's never raced when you No when doubt you about it. it. Uh, that filly uh, that beat us uh, had experience on us. And, uh, and obviously she had already run once and run well. It's not like she had run a, a bad race. So she had run well and uh, once already. So she had a big advantage on us. So her next start, Maddie's next start, you hope to be the, the futurity stakes, the sales stakes at Lone Star next Correct. month. Correct. That's what we're pointing towards, yes. Now, he also has um, a Kentucky bred son of McCracken named Release McCracken that is at Lone Star and has been working, I see. He is, and he's doing very well. He's one of those that we, we gave a little time after the sale. Uh, we backed uh, well off of him and uh, just trained lightly. Now we're coming forward with him. He's doing very, very well. We liked everything we've seen of him. Uh, there's a good chance he'll make his way to Kentucky at some point. Uh, uh, we're not in any hurry to get him started, but uh, we've liked everything we've seen from him. Kind of go sail to sail with Landon. He's a, a pretty enthusiastic guy. Uh, he's really, uh, really getting into the game. And uh, we've bought you know, more than I expected over the last year. Um, so. We've got quite a few coming up, and uh, hopefully uh, a lot of them will uh, do as well as we hope and think, and it'll, the business will keep growing for him. Uh, do you have advice for people that are considering getting in the business, like be like Landon, be patient? <laughs> yeah, I mean, find the right people, you know, do some homework, find the right people to get involved in with, and uh, get some good guidance. And if you find the right people, then listen to them. Uh, you know, it's this game. Uh, it doesn't go as you'd like to go all the time. It doesn't go. Everything doesn't go perfect. You know, they are animals, and uh, there's time to move forward and time to back off and, and let them develop at their own speed. And sometimes, people come from other industries. They don't really understand that. So, um, 
I would say, you know, find the best person you can to, to give you some guidance and listen to them. And through your connection, he, Landon was able to buy into a piece of hidden connection uh, before she won the uh, Pocahontas here, and then she went on and be in the Breeders' Cup and finished fourth. Correct. I, that was great. I, I loved uh, him getting involved in that. I think he bought a, a four percent, four or five percent share in her, um, and was able to go along that ride. So it was a, a lot of fun for him, and, and it was a lot of fun for me to have him along.